YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dion. This is a crazy foundation of YouTube. The crazy just because I am sometimes, usually not intentionally, but you know, it, stuff happens. Um, the troll just making fun of the beauty community. Everything needs to be perfect, flawless. Cover this up, change the features, slim your nose, you know, tighten up, you know, under here, chisel, bake, blah blah blah. Here, enhance your features if you want to. We love playing the face paint, but don't change your features. Learn to love yourself for who you are and for how you look. Self-acceptance, self-love, that's the concept behind the Crazy Troll Nation of YouTube. I would love for you to be on a troll train with me. Come with me for the ride and let's just have a party. Let's have a ball. We start here with chapstick, but I'm not today because I got this on. Uh, so we're just going to jump into what we're doing. Someone asked me, um, Huda Marina asked me to do, well, she didn't ask me to do it. She asked if I was going to do um, a, a video of my 2021 favorites and then I'm thinking that would be kind of boring so we commented back and forth on Instagram I thought it would be kind of boring because I only keep what I like and I can say 90% of what I have I love the other 10% I strongly like if I don't like something or if it doesn't work for me I do not keep it and so if you watch my videos you'll see me using the same stuff and so that's why I thought it might be boring. And I have done a favorites video for skincare. I did a video recently of favorites of skincare and of makeup. And that was a giveaway video. And so I feel like I kind of talked about it a lot. But then I thought, you know, this might be good for newer people to my channel to see what my favorites are. Um, and so that's what we're doing here. I'm going to start with skincare because this I use every day. I'm looking at it because it's right here. I use every day. I use the Garnier Skin Active, the Gentle Sulfate Free Cleanser. If I only have on a base face and eyeshadow, this will remove all of that. And it does say gently foams to remove oil, impurities, and makeup for soft, healthy looking skin, all skin types, even sensitive skin. I have sensitive skin. No sulfates, oil, soap, alcohol, or fragrance. Dermatologist tested for gentleness. This will remove all of my makeup. Not my, my, not my, excuse me, mascara and not my eyeliner, but it will remove everything else, including my brow pencil that I use, which is the Fenty Brow MVP. And I do wash a second time just as a double cleanse. And so this, and most days I don't even wear makeup. So this is what I use to wash my face in the morning. If at night, well, in the morning before I go to sleep because I'm nocturnal. So that was backwards. So when I say when I get up in the morning, what I mean is late afternoon or early evening. <laughs> And when I say at night, what I mean is early morning when I go to sleep because I'm nocturnal. So this I use when I wake up. I'll just put it that way. If I do my face like I did today, I'll use the makeup remover wipe to get off the eyeliner, the mascara, and then I'll wash my face with this. And then when I get in the shower, I'll wash my face again. But I use this every single day. This I use, I am pissed off, y'all. I'm going to tell you why. Dr. Dennis Gross Frolic and Retinol Triple Correction Eye Serum. I've been using this for over two years. They discontinued it, they reformulated it, and repackaged it. And I'm pissed because I don't know if my skin is going to like it. The reason I like this is because you can put it under your eyes and you only need like half a pump. Like a little bit goes a long way. It lasts for a year after you open it and I do use it within that time frame and so I don't even put a label on it because I'm going to use it within a year you just need like a half of a half a pump and I dot it here and then I do from my lash line up to my brow bone and then I go back and rub this in under here and make sure I get in the corners this is the only eye serum I've ever seen that you can use on your lids and it was really helpful for me I think it was over the summer when I had sunburn because I was out at Virginia Beach two or three days in a row and I didn't wear my sunglasses and my eyelids were sensitive. This helped to clear that up. And so I like having an eye serum I can do underneath and up top. And let me tell you something else with this. I purchased it on a whim because my skin is funny. So I'm like, if it don't work, I'm sending this shit back. I put this on at night. The next morning I noticed a difference in my under eye discoloration and in my puffiness. And if it's one of those days where because I sleep everywhere. I start on my back, on the left side, right side, stomach. But if I'm mostly sleeping on my stomach, you know, fluid drains according to gravity. So if I'm laying face down or face side, 
I might wake up and my eye, my under eyes are extra puffy because the flu is draining into my face instead of laying on your back and it's draining back. Put this on 10, 15 minutes later, that puffiness is gone. I love this stuff. And when I saw they changed the formula and the packaging, I was so fucking pissed off because I love this. And I think I only have one more as a backup. You can find it on Amazon, but who knows if it's really this one or if it's just a knockoff. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not even going to go that route. And also, he has an eye cream. Frolic plus retinol eye cream. So this just goes underneath. They changed the formula. Let me package this one too. And I could, I'm okay without this one. Just keep this one. But they changed both of them. And I only have one more of this one in my cabinet too. So I'm just pissed off. Like, dude, like it wasn't broken. Why are you trying to fix it? And the serum that they repackaged and reformulated it only says for under your eyes and so that means i'm gonna have nothing for like my lid area where like now my eyelids are feeling weird and i'm hoping it's not that eyeshadow palette this would soothe that to put this <laughs> i use this morning and night use this morning and night both of these i use twice a day and using them both for over a year probably close to two years i think i might have said that earlier another thing i really love is the olay regenerative miracle boost concentrate fragrant free I don't know what's in here. I use this in the morning and at night underneath my moisturizer. My skin loves this stuff. Loves. I use this twice a day as well. This is Peter Thomas Roth Potency Potent Hyphen C Power Serum. 20% vitamin C, 3% antioxidant, vitamin A, 2% folic acid. This I use twice a day as well. This shit right here, <laughs> 98 fucking dollars. I only get it on sale. If I see it somewhere for half off, I'll get like two of them. Somebody had a sale. I bought Ulta. They had a 21 days of beauty sale. I bought four of them. Because <laughs> I'm not paying $98 for one. And because I do use it twice a day, like I go through it. It's only one ounce. I go through this. One pump twice a day. I did an experiment because I'm like, I'm not paying that kind of money. But the thing is, is because my skin is so sensitive that when I find something my skin likes, I got to get it. I don't have to, but if I want my skin to be happy, I got to get it. And so I said, what well, is this really making a difference? And so I let myself run out. Within like two days, my skin was feeling dry and feeling cracked. I was like, damn, now I got to buy that thing. But then I saw it on sale. For half off, I bought two of them. I was like, whoo. So I know now I cannot be without this. And so when you see sales on stuff, 98 fucking dollars. And I have tried other brands, inexpensive stuff, and my skin is like, bitch, no. We want Peter. <sighs> Twice a day. My skin loves it. This I use at night. Peter Thomas Roth. This is, I think, like $65. Retinol Fusion PM Night Serum. Pure and potent time release, micro encapsulated retinol, 1.5%. And it has vitamin C and E in it for all skin types. This I just use at night. And it comes with a dropper. I'm going to squeeze it all out so I don't waste any. It comes with a slanted dropper. Oh, there's still some in there. Uh, I just do three drops. One, two, three. And that covers my whole face and my neck. So this will last because you only need like two or three drops. I gave a friend of mine one of these. QVC had a sell. This is one ounce. QVC had a sell, a 6.7 ounce, huge. And it was $119. This is 65. I'm like, oh, that's a good deal. So I purchased it. And then when I kept looking at it, I'm like, wait a minute. It's only good for a year after you open it. I'm like, how the hell? If I don't, I don't get through this in a year. So I'm like, what am I going to do with a 6.7 ounce? So I gave it to a friend of mine because I'm like, if she likes it and her husband and her daughter, they'll use it up in a year. She said she did two drops. It did her whole face and down her neck and the back of her neck. I'm like, damn. <laughs> so I told her, make sure you let your husband try it, your daughter try it, so that way you guys will use it up. But for the for the price, it was good. $119 for 6.7 ounces. But for me, it's like, I don't even go through one ounce. And it's $65. So again, when I see this on sale, I'm looking to see when it expires. June 2022. And it's maybe like down to here. Which means I opened it in June 2021. So it's only like to here. So I got six months to get. But anyway, so I only get this when it's on sale and or I have points because it's $65. But my skin loves it. 
This I love too. Mm, Dr. Dennis Gross Stress Repair Face Cream. This is $72. I only get it when it's on sale. My friend Bree, hey girl. She sent me, I think with GMA deals or something. It was there was a sale that they had. Half off. This is $72. Half off. So I bought two. I will not be without this. And this, you only need a tiny bit. And when I first got it, I was using it like regular moisturizer. Take a scoop and blah, blah, blah. And I went through it in like two months. And I said, I'd be damned if I'm going to spend like $72 every two or three months. And so I started using it very sparingly. And what I found is I can just use like maybe a dime size amount and just dot it. Because it is very moisturizing. And that's enough for my whole entire face and for my neck. And so now it's lasting me four-ish, almost five months. And I'm still trying to stretch it because $72 is still a lot. And so when I see it on sale, and I mean more than like the 20% off Sephora sale. It needs to be like 30% to 50% off and then I'll buy it. Like, especially if it's 50% off, I'll get like two of them because I know I'm going to use it. So this I use usually twice a day. So that's the skincare. Makeup stuff. This is where it might be boring if you've been here before. Because if I like something, I use it. So it's like the same stuff. So, but for those of you who are new here, these are not only my 2021 favorites. These are just my fucking favorites. <laughs> We're going to start where it makes sense. I feel like I just kind of did this tag. No, it was... um. Fat Chat Beauty, I saw she did a tag of if I lost all my makeup, what would I repurchase? And I'll put her link below. And so, my favorite primer, Milk Hydro Grip. And is that what it say? Milk Hydro Grip Primer. This, I love this stuff. This is 1.52 ounces. It's good for a year after you open it. I never make it through a whole one. But it's more cost effective than getting the, the small one. I think it's like 30 something dollars. I usually get down in here before it expires. And that's because I don't wear makeup every day. If I wore makeup every day, I would definitely go through this. Because if I only get to here, which is probably a little more than an ounce, maybe? No, probably an ounce. Yeah, so I would use that in here if I wore makeup every day. So that's the primer that I have that I love. My foundation. Well, let me back up. Concealer, NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. What I have under my eyes today is medium dark two caramel. This is my skin tone, which is great. And so it does just kind of balance out under my eyes because my under eyes is a different color than the rest of my face because my skin is thinner under here. And so you see more of the grayish, the greenish, the olive because of my blood vessels you see underneath of my skin. And so this just helps to balance that out. And it's also really good for here because it is my skin tone. And so it makes the creases of my under the creases under my nose, it makes that area match the rest of my face. And it kind of balances out my mustache area. Don't act like you ain't got a mustache. Don't even act like you don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. My favorite foundation, Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Makeup. It is a matte foundation. For those of you who don't like matte foundations, add one drop of beauty oil to each drop of foundation. And that'll help sheer it out to where it's not that matte 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 where you may feel like your face is dry or cracking or creasing and so if you like the coverage but you don't like how it makes your skin feel add a drop of beauty oil in it because i do that sometimes particularly weirdly in the summer which is when i sweat more i find that this is too mattifying it makes my skin feel too dry which is just weird i'm weird i'm a troll what did you expect but this is my favorite foundation because i love how it looks Look at it. Look, look at my face. I mean, you can get past like the two pink blush. <laughs> but this, I love it because it nails my undertone. And this is 4W1 Honey Bronze. I can also wear 4N2, which is Spice Sand. Either one I can wear all year round. I may or may not need a bronzer. And I can do that because it nails my undertone. Otherwise, other brands, I'm buying a different shade like every two or three months. And then I'm trying to mix and do all that. And I'm lazy. I just want one product I can put on and it's going to work. I don't want to jump through hoops and do cartwheels and all that crazy shit. I just want something that's going to go on, look right. And that's what this does for me. And I like the finish. As I said, if your skin is too dry or you don't like the matte look, add one drop. Just one. One drop of beauty oil per pump of the foundation. And if you try it, let me know how that works for you because it worked for me. Because initially, I wasn't really into matte foundations and I tried it because of the color match. And I was like, this is nice. But so I started adding a beauty oil and now I don't even add the beauty oil. So, you know, whatever. Um, favorite powder. 
I don't know if I have a favorite powder. I was using the Fenty powder for a long time and I still do and I was using different shades but what I found with the Fenty powder was I still needed to set with a translucent powder under my eyes and lightly over my face because the Fenty powder adheres to any moisture anywhere on my face and so how some people can just go in with the Fenty powder and just dust it all over wherever that brush hit that's where it would stick and then I'm trying to blend 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 and so even though I <gasps> excuse me so rude so even though I really do like the Fenty powder I wanted to see if I could find something that I could use for under eye and my entire face. And prior to that, I was using, and I do really love, the Lancome Long Time No Shine Translucent Setting Mattifying Powder. So I was using that for under eye and to lightly set the rest of my face. It is translucent, it is mattifying. So you may want to spray your face after you do your base because it, it <laughs> and it was so mattifying that it almost made me look pasty even though it was a translucent powder because it just dried everything down so much that I would really feel like I need to spray my face, which isn't a big deal after I put that on. But recently I tried the Fashion Fair Truly Tawny. I saw a few people who were almost my shade twin on YouTube. Like, I'm just like, this video is for YouTube. How did I forget YouTube? Y'all, I'm telling you the, the crazy and crazy Troll Nation. And I do really like this powder and I can use this for under eye and for my entire face. And so I don't necessarily need a translucent powder first under here and I lightly set my face and then put this on. So I'm liking this for that reason. Price wise, you know, it's okay. I'm liking how it performs. I do not like the scent of it. The scent does dissipate within less than five minutes, but initially I'm just like, oh my God, I can't stand how this smells. But I really like how it performs. And so I can see this becoming my go-to powder. It is a lot less in here for almost the same price as a Fenty powder, but I never would finish a full-size Fenty powder. And so the same amount of money and then throw some away or the same amount of money and use it up. Like, and I think they're both good for a year after you open it. But I, I do feel like the Fashion Fair will become my favorite setting powder. It's just that smell initially until it dissipates that I, that just throws me off. But I, I do really, really like that powder. So, I mean, it's, it's close. It's as close to being my favorite setting powder as possible. And that's only because of the, the smell of it. Where are we now? Eye primer, which is right. I was going to say over there because I put the stuff for this over there so I can type it in um, the description box of the video. But my favorite primer, favorite, favorite, favorite is the Fenty Beauty eye primer because it's a tacky primer and I usually do my lid colors first which means you see this the colors are going to stick <laughs> this I've been using this for years for years I love that primer that is my absolute favorite for since we're talking about eyes the Fenty Beauty brow MVP I use soft black the reason I love this is not only because I can get a fine line with the pencil part when I draw my line and then fill it in but why I really like it because a, a pencil brush is a pencil brush right a, a brow brush is a brow brush and I've been using this for years as well once I tried this I never went back to any other brow pencil because the brush part is an actual brush you see that it's not a spoolie and because my skin is sensitive every time I would use a spoolie even going sideways or brushing up it felt like it was like scraping my skin I'm hypersensitive my doctor confirmed it I'm not making that up true story and so once I tried this I was like this is actually a brush and because I keep my brows tamed I don't necessarily need something that's going to comb through my brows and shape them up in this way and that way and so for me just brushing them over and then brushing them up works fine and I love this because it feels soft on my brows. I'm telling you, once I tried this, I never went back to a spoolie. Never, never. I've been using this since after they launched. Maybe a few months after they launched because I wait to see reviews. I don't do pre-launch stuff. I've been using this ever since, ever since it came out. And I've been using the eye primer ever since I tried it after it came out too. because I love this tacky primer. This is Lancome Sills Booster XL. It's a mascara base. This works for me under any mascara and it's basically in a mascara primer. So I put this on upper lower lashes and then I put my mascara on. 
Does it last any longer? Does it make my lashes curl? You know, I don't know because I don't pay attention. Some people do wear tests and they take pictures. This is when I put this on at 8 in the morning. This is what it looks like again at 4 o'clock. Like, I don't do all that. I just know that it works for me. When I apply it, it does lift my lashes. It does separate my lashes. And when I put my mascara on, that lifts and separate my lashes even more. I don't do falsies. <laughs> Unpopular opinion. Don't need them, especially if they're fl fluttering in the wind. <laughs> I'm gonna put that video below my, my unpopular opinion video because that part was just fucking nuts. But I really do like this and it is Lancome, so it is like 20 something dollars. Do you need a mascara primer and then spend 20, 30 dollars for mascara? No, I only buy this when it's on sale and it usually ends up in the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale for half off. And so I'll get like two or three. And they do have sample sizes, not samples, but they do have minis on a Sephora website. So even if you wanted to try it for like half the cost, and it really is like half the cost. So you're not really saving money <laughs> buying the small one versus the large one. But if you just want to try it, just give that a try. So I do really enjoy this. And as I said, it works for me under any mascara. Speaking of which, my favorite mascara is the Fenty Full Frontal Mascara. This is because I'm black and I do have two of the smaller ones. Ivy League, which is green, and I have Miss Merlot, which is burgundy. I love this mascara for two reasons. I love the formula. It doesn't flake on me. It doesn't end up all the way down here. It doesn't dry my lashes out. When I remove it at the end of the, the night, you know, my, my eyelashes are not falling off because the mascara made them crunchy or hard. And I also like the brush. The way the brush is, it's like long bristles, short bristles, long bristles, short bristles. And so when I put on my mascara, which I do with any other mascara wand, I start at the base of my lashes and I turn the brush as I go up my lashes. And so it's really coating through all of my lashes. And if you're having trouble with the outer, air, outer corner or inner corner, spike it. Use the tip of the brush and just spike it. Or... For any mascara, if it clumps, which this does not clump on me, just spike it and that'll remove the clumps. And the same for the bottom, you know, just spike it. And so I really do like this mascara for the formula and also for the brush. And even the minis have the same type of brush as this one, which I really like as well. We're going to move down to lip liners, eyeliners. I just remember, let me pull one out so I don't forget to go back to that. For lip liners, I really like the NYX... Let me look at it and read it. Suede Matte Lip Liner. This one is in cold brew. I have multiple colors because NYX had a 40% off sale for the holidays, for the 2021 holiday season. And I like these for, even though, and like I said, it's suede matte lip liner. So even though it's a matte lip liner, it doesn't feel really drying. And I like these to line my lips and to fill them in and put on a lip color that's similar to the lip liner on top of it. Because if you... Today, I used the Fenty Stunner, so it's almost the same color. So if this were to fade, which it really doesn't, my lips would still look the same because of the color of the lip liner. So if I was using a purple lipstick, I would use the purple lip liner. Line and fill in my lips, put on the purple lipstick. So then if the lipstick fades, your lip still has that same purple color. So that's why I got multiple colors. And I really don't even do all of that often. I did it for this look because I was just doing a full face tutorial but that's a trick you can do if your lipstick fades. Line them and fill them in with a lip liner that's the same color as your lipstick. And that's something I learned years ago. And I'm like, oh, this is really cool. Like, it works. I held this up because I used this today on top of this. This is the Fenty Stunner, my favorite. And I don't know why I'm shaking it up, but I'm going to use it. The Fenty Stunners, I'm a, I, I like myself with a bold eye and a bold lip. So this is Unveil. I have the dark purple, which is, what is it called? Undefeated. I have, I don't know what shade that is. <laughs> I'm, my color perception is off, like seriously. Underdog. I was going to say brown, but it's not because this one is brown and that's a different shade. So this is like a reddish brown or a brick red. I, I really don't know. I really do have problems with color perception, which is why you'll very rarely hear me describe colors. This one, and I'm shaking them up because the stun is, they will separate. So before you use them, turn it upside down and shake it up. This one is uncuffed, which initially I thought it was a neutral. If I don't have on an eye look, or if I have one just like a really, really light, almost there, not their eye look, this goes. But when I used it for something like this, 
or even like a smoky brown eye. This did not go. And so I don't even use this as much as I thought I was. I called myself getting a neutral one, but it really wasn't. And of course I have a black one. Uh -huh. And this one is uninvited. Yeah, so my favorite lippies are the Fenty Stunners. I don't have a problem with liquid lips, like drying my lips out or the butthole effect where it like flakes on the inside and here and then it's just looking like what you've been doing that you shouldn't have been doing. <laughs> I also really like the Fenty Gloss Bombs. My favorite is Hot Chocolate because it goes with everything. And even though it looks shimmery in here and it may look like it's purplish or whatever, like this is the shade on me. It's like there, not there. Just a little bit of shine, a little hint of color. So this just enhances my natural lip color as most lip glosses do. Like it doesn't really add anything. This one is cheeky and it came in a bundle with something. I wouldn't have purchased it because to me, because glosses do just enhance my natural lip color, it's like, do I really need this color? No. <laughs> and this one, I think, I think I purchased this one. This one is Sweet Mouth. And you know, I think it might've been on sale or something. So we're gonna put that on this side. So this is really a there, not there. Just to add shine, just for no reason. And so these are the three that I have. I don't plan on getting any other colors, but I do really like Hot Chocolate the best out of the glosses, the gloss bombs, because it does add a little something to any look I wear. I can put this on and it'll go because it just enhances my natural lip color. A little bit darker than this one does. Um, that's everything. Eyeshadow. My favorite formula, Natasha Denona Creamy Matte Formula and her Cream to Powder Formula. Hands down, my favorite eyeshadow formulas. And I do have quite a few of her palettes. Actually, most of my palettes are from her. I did branch out in 2021 to Nomad Cosmetics. I like their formula too. And what palette was it? One of their palettes, the shimmers crease on me. Regardless of what primer I use, the shimmers crease on me. So I think it's just something with that formula. But hands down, formula, love, tried and true. Natasha Denona Creamy Mattes and her Cream to Powders. Um, unpopular opinion. I hate Pat McGrath's Celestial Shades. I'm gonna tell you why. Come for me if you want to, I don't give a shit. This is my opinion, my experience, my channel. Thank you for being here. I do appreciate you watching. <laughs> and it's healthy to hear opposite opinions of your own. I've, I've said this on other videos, or even like my own when I said, is this palette only problematic to me? And somebody said, yeah, it's only you. And I'm like, I cannot be the only one. Cause if you look on the reviews on the Sephora website, it's not all five-star reviews. Everybody does not like every single thing. So don't take it personal if somebody doesn't love something that you love. Or hate. I hate her celestial shades. The special shades to me, hell no. Because my eyes cannot tolerate glitter. My eyes cannot tolerate fallout. Do your eyes first and then do your face. Well, that doesn't always make sense for me because I might just do a base face to a video and later on I'm like, oh, let me just do an eye look, do a tutorial. So I'm like, I'm not going to wash my face off just to do my eyes first, just to do a video. And so you, you can say what you want to say. Pat, don't swipe. Try that. Try different primers. Try that. Do this, do that. And I can clean up put, putting on extra concealer, putting on extra powder. Who want to do all that though? You know what I'm saying? And so, No. And also with those celestial shades, and I had the celestial mega divinity, whatever palette came out, um, holiday 2020, sorry for smacking. That shit was so fucking messy. I took it away with me for a week on vacation. Well, quasi vacation. Even the person I was with was like, mm-mm. Mm -mm. she's like that don't even look like you even like the colors and how the, the looks she was just like that ain't you but I wear something like this she'd be like yeah anyway but even with the fallout it wasn't just fallout under here okay put on more concealer cover that up fine I would have fallout down here on my face fallout on my chin fallout on my fucking forehead I'm like how did that even get up there like it just was everywhere and you take a brush, it would not brush off. Like, I don't know if my skin just like, we were just going to keep this here. 
as a permanent ornament like I don't know but it was just it was impossible for me to get the glitter off and even like on my hands I will wash my hands several times through the day and then I'm getting ready for bed at night and I'm like what's that shimmery stuff oh damn the glitter's still on my hands why is glitter still on my hands I thought I washed my hands like 10 times like it you love to have grass and your shades I love it that you love it but for me, that's the fuck no. And I know I'm being like, <laughs> you can say what you want to say. It just makes me heated when people take it as a personal attack when you don't like something that they love. Now, if she did a palette with all mattes and it wasn't all pinky, rosy, mauvey shades, because <laughs> that's what it seems like she keeps doing to my eye. And I do have color problems, excuse me, with color perception. But if she did a palette with like all mattes, I would be all over it. Because I love her mattes. I just can't deal with them celestial shades. And so you will never see me collecting mothership palettes. Because I'm not going to spend that type of money. $125 or even on sale. And I can only use six shades out of the palette. That, that to me does not even make sense. Not at all. But again, you love it. I love it for you. This is my opinion. My experience. My sensitive eyes. My sensitive skin. No thank you. I do love one of her blushes, though. That's why I didn't talk about my favorite blush. And it's over there. So I used it today to try to tone this down. What I am really loving is... I should go get it. Um, but I'm not. It's way over there. What I'm loving... I'll link the video below. Because I tried Desert Orchid as a blush. And the Bobbi Brown Shimmer Brick and Bronze. And this is the Shimmer Brick and Bronze. Desert Orchid, when I looked at it, I said, it may give me just that little hint of color, just a little bit of something. Like, is it there? Is it not there? It did exactly what I thought it was going to do, and it looked perfect. And putting this Shimmer Brick as a highlight, and even though it looks weird, you wipe, you swipe your brush across up and down once or twice. This as a highlight and Desert Orchid down here, oh my gosh, it was beautiful. I'm going to link that video below. So that's my favorite combination I do love the blush. I haven't branched out to other blushes because I prefer a natural blush, which this one is not. That's why I kept trying to tone it down because I prefer a bold eye and a bold lip. And so having a bold cheek color just looks clownish. Like even now I'm looking at myself like this, this is not it. But the Pat McGrath blush, Desert Orchid, and the Bobbi Brown Shimmer Brick and Bronze as a highlight, perfection. I am really liking the Natasha Denona Bronze and Glow Palette, the tan one. Is it my favorite? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say the Pat McGrath doesn't work it in the Bobby Brown Shimmer Brick and Bronze as a highlight. So that's my favorite for 2021. I did not think this video was going to be this long. Eyeliners. Uh, my favorite eyeliners. This should be the last thing. Did I do liquid liner? Damn it. No, I didn't. Um... Do I have one open? I don't have a favorite liquid eyeliner. I have the Cause I'm Black from Fenty. And I've been using um, Max Fluid Lines. The black one and the brown one. But I don't have a favorite. I don't have a favorite eyeliner for my upper lash line. For my inner rims. And I have a video about this. I'll link it below. <laughs> is the NYX retractable eyeliner and I have multiple colors these are the only eyeliners that I can wear on my inner rims which is your waterline that do not irritate my eyes except the black one does sometimes if I do my upper rims the lower rim it doesn't so I, I don't know maybe I'm just getting too close or something with that one but these are the only ones and I have multiple colors because I'll put them on my inner rims and then sometimes I'll bring it underneath my lower lash line and sometimes I won't. But these, the purple one, the deep purple and the blue, I love these two on my lower waterline. I think it brings out my eye color. The gold just gives like a little something, something, not really if I just want a little something, something. And the brown is just like a basic, yeah, let's just put that there just because type of thing. But those are my favorite eyeliners because they're the only ones that don't irritate my rims. Um, favorite makeup brushes? F 
for right now, I'll say Scott Barnes. And I'm hesitating because there's other brushes that I do really like as well. But if I had to choose a collection of brushes and I can only choose one collection of brushes, it would be the Scott Barnes brush collection, his 10 piece collection. So that's it for this video. I'm looking around to see if I'm forgetting anything. I did mention chapstick. <laughs> setting powder, not setting powder, setting spray. I I am liking, I don't have a favorite. I am liking the Fenty, what is it called? Baby Would It Do Mist. I do like it. I use setting sprays for if I put on too much powder and my face looks powdery. That's what I use setting sprays for. I don't notice my makeup lasting any longer, any shorter, and I do still tend to get shiny in this area regardless of if I spray or not. And so for me, it's just, if I just wanna put a little something on, I do really, really like the Fourth Ray Do It Hydrating Hyaluron Hyaluronic Mist, excuse me. This at Ulta is $12. Sometimes they have a buy one, get one half off, but it doesn't say when it expires. And so when I emailed them, they messaged me and said six to 12 months have you open it. Well, which is it? Six months, seven months, eight months, nine, 10, 11, 12? Like, how do you know when the damn thing expires? And it's 4.15 fluid ounces in here. And so part of me doesn't want it, but because of the price, $12, just throw it out in six months. It does smell like coconut or something, cucumber. And so I'll spray it and I'm sitting here, I'll be doing a video doing my face and I'll be like, what's that smell? And I'm like, oh, it's the spray. <laughs> it's not bothersome. It doesn't irritate my allergies, but the smell, you know, I smell it when I first spray, spray it and then I don't smell it. And then I'll get a whiff like later on and I'm like, oh, it's that spray. But I do really like this one. It does settle down the powdery look if I'm looking powdered um, and it does feel refreshing. And so there may be times when I'm just like, oh, fuck it. And I'll just spray my face just because for no reason, but I don't have a favorite setting spray and I don't use them all the time. Um, I'm really gonna go, this video is long and I have a feeling I'm not gonna edit too much. Thank you for watching. Let me know what your favorites are or if any of these are your favorites. And if you wanna come at me about Pat McGrath's Celestial Shade, you can do that. I really don't care because it's only makeup. Like I'm not, attacking anybody it's just my experience with those that formula yeah that's really it i'm looking around at that's it so thank you for being here and you will see me in the next video